So, good evening, everybody. Um, I'm going to talk to you about scalable cloud solutions with Node.js. Um, I'm here with my colleague, Mr. Matthias Peter. Um, we're both uh, two passionate JS developers with year long of experience. And uh, we're both working for a company called Team Centric Software, which is located in Munich and Hamburg, uh, and which focuses primarily um, around web apps and native mobile apps. Among other, other technologies, uh, we're using Redis and Node.js uh, as the base for many of our projects uh, since 2010, which means we're using Node.js since the early days. Uh, to be specific, we're using Node.js in production since version 0.4. Um, at this time, there was barely any infrastructure for Node, which means we have developed many building blocks for our Node.js project ourselves, um, implemented many microservices, um, and of course we released um, a great many of uh, those modules, those open source modules over the year, which are of course install installable via NPM. Um, in production since order 4 means we of course have Node.js um, running in customer project. Um, today I want to focus on uh, one customer in specific, which is the company Milon. Um, Milon is a manufacturer of um, advanced electronic fitness devices. Um, those electronic fitness devices run um, off the cloud on a software called the Milon Care. Uh, and now you're looking at me and you're saying, software in a health club? What? Electronic fitness devices? He's going to talk about scalability, yes, isn't he? Right? So, in order to bring you <coughs> back to scalability, let's talk about two ways of training. First, the old-fashioned way in the classic fitness studio and the fitness studio the Milan way. First of all, training the old way, looking or well, wanting to look like Arnie. Uh, you're going into the fitness studio, you grab your paper-based training plan, written down all the devices you want to train on, you approach the training device like a bench press, and now you have to adjust the seat length, seat height, you have to adjust the weight, and then you're going to pumping iron. And after pumping iron, you're going to uh, put it all back into the training plan. You're going to write down the progress, uh, what you've done. Now, you have to do this over and over again for every device you're going to train on. And of course, what you're lacking is statistics and uh, real progress. You have to do it manually, you have to, to look up if you've uh, achieved your goals or not. Looking at the uh, fitness studio where you can train on uh, Milan devices, you enter the fitness studio and you put on your RFID card on those training devices. Um, when you put your RFID card on those training devices, you are authenticated, identified, and all the settings, uh, so seat height, uh, seat length, uh, weight adjustments, and so on, are all um, gotten from the Milan Care software running in the cloud, and after doing your training, it is all synced back into the cloud. So uh, you have to do nothing more. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> um, when looking at um, training on, in uh, Milan based studios, of course it's the same um, as in any other studio out there. Um, most people are training before work or after work. So what we got uh, when we look at the Milan Care device log over the day is a quite spiky curve. So at that point, we really, really need to talk about scalability. We need to scale up and down our system within the cloud. So how do we do it? Um, when developing the Milan system, um, we realized that we have to talk about two types um, of computing tasks which need, which need to be scaled. We have synchronous tasks and asynchronous tasks. Synchronous tasks are uh, pretty straightforward. Every task that needs an immediate feedback needs to be computed um, directly is synchronous. So the login of a user on the device, the login on the web UI, uh, creating a new user, changing his training plan, these are all things that need to be done instantaneously. Um, scaling out for synchronous tasks is pretty straightforward, obviously more servers, better hardware, greater storage, and using the cloud, of course, features like auto-scaling. So we're looking at um, the infrastructure. It looks like this. Um, we have the Milan devices. We have uh, multiple EC2 instances um, behind the load balancer running the API uh, for, 
for the devices, uh, the web service for the web UI and so on. Uh, we have S3 in DynamoDB for the data, uh, as well as MySQL. And uh, when running in peak times, we use auto-scaling features of Amazon to uh, launch more and more EC2 instances when needed and to scale down when we don't need them. Um, one thing that is very special here is every time you're training on a real device, the raw data this device creates is getting written into the Redis code. Raw as it is, because it's fast, it's simple, it's fire and forget. But what needs to be done is, out of this raw data, we need to generate statistics at some, at some point. We need to synchronize the data with the training plan of the user. We need to look up, has he achieved his goals or not? So what needs to be done is processing. Processing this data, later on logging it to S3 and Dynamo, stashing it, archiving it, and so on. This is an asynchronous task, or something we can do some point in the future. How do we, how do we scale this particular process, which, which is very big when you think about all the data collected over um, a day when uh, uh, really hundreds of thousands of users are training on the system? Well, we scale it using queue. Queuing for all the logs, the training, archiving, statistics, and so on. Um, queuing has several advantages um, over classic execution, which is it's asynchronous. You have the possibility to distribute work. I'm going to talk about this later. Uh, you have reliability. And what is very important for us, we can guarantee a success or failure of a task. So in order to um, really understand what we are doing, we first need to to talk about queuing or how a queue should work in our opinion. Well, what is a queue? A queue is nothing more than just a stack of messages. A message can be a task of some kind, create statistics data, log something. Um, in order to um, do something with those messages within a queue, you need a worker. A worker is someone who gets a message, processes it, and decides whether it's a successful or it's a failure. So the worker receives a copy of a message, in our opinion, um, while the original message stays within the stack in the queue, but gets invisible for a um, definable amount of time. So the message is only delivered to exactly one worker at a time. So when the message, uh, when the message is successfully uh, processed by the worker, it gets deleted. So the queue now has one element less. So this process uh, goes on forth and forth. Um, now what happens when an error occurs is that the message, message B, stays within the stack and can be received later on. So uh, for n amounts of time, so we, we can define um, a failure rate. So in this case, message B pops up sometime later in the future gets executed again, nothing gets lost. Now what about scaling? How do we scale a system like this? Well, it's pretty simple. Um, we can add as many worker instances as we want, as a, a message only gets delivered to one worker exactly. So we can scale this up and down infinitely. You can have 100 workers working on the same queue, getting the task, and the worker can be a process or a server with a process, so we can use it auto with, with auto-scaling features on uh, AWS, uh, scaling the worker instances up and down. And at this point, I want to introduce you to our queue, which is uh, RSMQ, the Redis Simple Message Queue, which will be um, shown in depth with the code by my colleague Matthias. Hello. Now, RSMQ is our Implementation of what uh, Aaron told you. Uh, it's a really simple message queue uh, developed two or three years ago, and we have an introduction from the Milo and other customers. Uh, very uh, successful. Uh, what's the design concept for RSM queue? Uh, it has to be simple, fast, uh, one key point it has to be only ready, so no management server is needed. And it guarantees that every message you receive out of the queue will only deliver to only one client or, or one worker who's receiving the message. Um, and as Aaron told you, the concept.
concept of our opinion keep uh, you to my particular visibility and keep time out for um, messages. Uh, what you want to see? Some code, so how to use it. First, um, what I don't show you, uh, you have to require RSMQ, for example, and get a new instance. That's not in the slides. So the first thing you have to do is create the queue. Very simple. Give the, na give the name foo, a visibility timeout of uh, 30 seconds. That's it. You create the queue. Next point, um, send in messages. Again, just uh, define the queue name foo as the message. In this case, I just put in bar as a string. Bar is a queue which is only strings as messages, but you can uh, use complex object types and by just um, making JSON stringy file so that you know <coughs> for the processing you know, more flexible. The third point, just receiving message uh, is also quite simple. Define the queue name for the received message and you get the message. Within the message you get a ID, the message again, bar, the receive count, in this case just the first time you received it, and some other metadata, which is not so interesting at this point. The last point, delete the message after you success success uh, processed it successfully, just delete it. And, uh, okay. Now, you would ask um, RSMQ, as I showed you, to implement a work, it's not quite simple. You have to receive the message, you have to process it, and then until it's not processed su successfully, you have to do the error handling, you have to pull the queue every time. <coughs> That's a very, uh, quite heavy lifting, you have to code a lot of things. Uh, but we've done, we've done this for, for you by the RSMQ worker. Our decision was to um, hold RSQ as a Q core module as simple as possible and put on top of RSQ uh, some uh, modules that helps you implement your uh, needs. So, how to use the RSQ worker on top of RSQ? Just in it, in this case, the, the worker, require the RSQ worker. Um, define the queue name, in this case then look simple. Then listen to the messages. Um, RSMQ worker will pull or will call the queue for you um, by every second or every five seconds as you define it in the configuration. And you will get a trigger until the message is in the queue. In this case, you get the message, the raw message content, a, you, have to, you get the next function, which you can have to call until you're ready, and the message ID for special processing in this case. Um, what the worker for you does in this case, if you call next, it will delete the message automatically. So you don't have to do this. If you define a reading, if you pass an error to the message, it will not be needed. The last thing you have to do, just uh, start the work at the end. One additional point, it's a, a little bit a coding helper again, uh, where you simpli it simplifies the sending of messages within the queue you define. So within the processing, during the listening, uh, it's quite simple to add more messages. So uh, in case you are uh, doing the logging, the statistics, it quite, it's quite possible that you will have to define more workers or um, write the files or something like that. So, but enough talk, I will show you a small demo. For this demo, uh, quite simple, I try to, I uh, here on the left side you get the input folder and the, the goal is to, to 
convert every image in this folder image of North Mountains, make grayscale images of all 478 files, and put it in the Amiga. That's all the First, for the demo, as a config file, you find a queue name, an input folder, a soldier, and the output folder. So first, you have to create the queue. <coughs> In this case, just as I showed you here in code, require R S and Q to a, a get an instance and just create the queue. That's all. For the demo, I get the queue attributes, which will, which will get which will retrieve the metadata of the defined queue to show you how many messages currently in this queue and how many messages are hidden from the computers. Here, just now create. As you can see, the, in the back, um, the queue is created within Redis. You see zero messages in and no message uh, hidden. So what we have to do at this point, put in some messages. Again, require R S and Q for this, for this uh, script. Uh, read the input folder, loop through every file, which you find, and that's the key point here, send in the message as five points. It's just the raw five points as a message you need to process. Then, as you can see, 478 files are uh, pushed into the queue. And you can, again, do this. We see message count 478. These are the messages we want to process. So, the third script uh, is the RSMQ work of the um, Again, simple, require the RSMQ worker. We'll give an instance with the configured queue name. Here are some configurations from the documentation. And, for example, listen to messages. That's what you have to do. You will get the file path again. As I showed you during the send script, I put in the file path, the raw file path, as message. So at this point, we get the file path as message. And the next function. So, what I'm doing here, using graphics magic, get the file, do a grayscale version of it, and here, write it out. Here's a little error handling I have to do because if it's not an image file, the graphics magic will throw an error. And you will see this later. There is some DB file in the now, the last thing you have to do, just call next, and you are done, and the message will be done. Here at the bottom, just start the worker, and it will, be, it will run. Additional error handlers to uh, process your errors, and uh, exceeding timers. These are special things you can read in the documentation. Now what we're going to see is the running worker. Just worker. Oh, that's it. Oh. But at this point, again, uh, what about scaling? Yeah. <laughs> that's a key point. What we can do now, uh, at the right, you see the uh, processor uh, statistics. And you see, we are not using the full power of this uh, laptop. Machine, so there should be more. So, just what you can do is some work.
four instances are running now. And there should, it should be uh, at 100% CPU usage, I think. You can see it on the right side. So with this feature, with RS and Q and RS and Q market, it's quite simple to build a script that uh, uses all the power of this machine. Now you can imagine, you can do this again on a different machine. So uh, do this in AWS or Heroku or whatever you want to do. You just need a Redis server, that's the point, and some instances. If you want to process these messages, or these, these images, as fast as portable, possible, throw in 100 uh, instances, and it will, it will be very fast. You can see, message count 110. Every time four messages are in flight, the instances are hidden at the point, to the, uh, at the time they were processed over here. You can see, the error, it's an MP4 file, so it uh, throws an error, checks, okay, this is not an image, and we will see this error at the end again, we'll, because the worker tries to retries a message which could not be processed uh, for default 10 times, but you can configure it. Here again, the same comes to be the store, here again, the MP4 file, and so on. Okay. That's the demo. Back to the slides. You know, I've done this before uh, for just one worker. And for four workers, as you can see, uh, performance increased just on this machine by 250%. Just with no, no single threaded. It's not quite easy to do this without a solution like this. So again, the features are RSQ, it's lightweight. Um, we tried to, to hold it as simple as possible, so just 500 lines of code. Um, the key point is it's just Redis, it's, that's all you need. You need a Redis server and nothing else. Uh, it has no overhead, so no OAuth uh, authentication, uh, some complex uh, processing to get to the queue, just uh, a trusted environment. It's important to know it's a trusted environment only, like Memcache. It's similar. And well, it's very fast. We tried it uh, in the benchmark with several thousand messages we processed by sending and receiving uh, several thousand on a small instance in the per second. Per second, that I think should be enough. Okay, uh, one more for, for RSMQ. We are developing many modules on top of RSMQ. Uh, we left a notification engine to uh, collect notifications and generate weekly or daily reports per mail or a REST interface on top of RSM2. With this you can easily uh, connect non-node systems like PHP, ASP, or just like curl or use this RSM2 with this um, system an RSM2 clean module which means a, just a terminal command, a terminal uh, module we are developing now. So that you can just use, use your terminal and type RSMQ, send <coughs> your message, that's it. And then the client also a monitor <coughs> gets the messages over time. So you can uh, use it and then uh, put it in one another as your Okay. Any questions? That's it.